Good morning, superstars. It's so good to see you again today. I'm Caden and I'm Ava, and today we're looking at the idea of making waves. Not the literal kind of waves you see at the ocean, we're thinking more about the impact we can have in the world around us. When we make waves, it means we're making a difference. Yes, what we do today can change the world around us. That's awesome, Caden. Super exciting. I know, right? As followers of Jesus, we make waves by being like him. Yes, in Galatians 5.22 it says, The fruit the Holy Spirit produces is love, joy and peace. It is being patient and kind and good. It is being faithful and gentle and having control of oneself. So by being kind and gentle, we're making waves. By showing love and acting peacefully, we're making waves. But the cool thing is, we don't have to do these things on our own. We have God's help. That's right. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, it says, God began a good work in you, and I'm sure he will carry it on until it is completed. This is all super exciting. Let's join Hayley now to find out more. Hey everyone, I'm Haley. Who's up for a swim? There's nothing I like better on a hot summer day than taking a dip in the local pool. That's another place where you can really make waves. Because what you do today can change the world around you. You can make waves in the water, sure, by splashing around a lot. But you can also make waves with people by showing things like kindness gentleness, and faithfulness. I've loved going to the pool for as long as I can remember, even before I learned how to swim. When you don't know how to swim, the pool can be scary, but I knew I could count on my arm floaties to keep me from sinking. <laughs> they work better in a bigger pool. It was nice to have a little help before I learned how to swim on my own, but even today when I'm out in deep water, I can count on a life vest to help keep me safe. Even if you're an excellent swimmer, a life vest will have your back if something unexpected happens. And if you're in a real emergency, there's always a life preserver. Oh, first try. <laughs> when you're out in the water and you're worried you might sink, you can totally count on any of these things. In today's story, we'll hear about two friends, David and Jonathan, who could totally count on each other. They were faithful, and I wasn't really that faithful when I said first try. <laughs> There's always a life preserver. Oh, I feel better getting that off my chest. Whew, yeah, feels good. I'll see you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 18 through 20. Jonathan and David couldn't have grown up more differently. Jonathan was the son of King Saul. David, on the other hand, was just an ordinary kid from Bethlehem, the youngest of eight brothers. David spent long hours alone as a shepherd. He made up songs to play on his harp and grew strong defending the sheep from wild animals. But things began to change quickly for David when God sent the prophet Samuel to Bethlehem. God was displeased with King Saul and wanted Samuel to choose a new king. When Samuel saw David, God spoke. Get up and anoint him. This is the one. Though David wasn't anything more than a shepherd boy yet, he was sent to the battle lines where his older brothers and King Saul faced the Philistine army and the giant Goliath. Choose one of your men. Have him come down and face me. <laughs> Through God's power, David faced Goliath with five smooth stones and a slingshot. Goliath was killed and the Philistines were defeated. King Saul was so impressed, he invited David to come live in the palace and help lead his army. This is where David and Jonathan met. Hey, I'm Jonathan, King Saul's son. I'm David, Jesse's son. Can I show you around? Uh, sure, uh, I mean, I've never been inside a palace. 
Dad's told me all about you. You fought Goliath with no armor. <laughs> well, it didn't actually fit. Look, if, if you're going to live with us and help lead the army and everything, you can't dress like a shepherd. Here, I want you to have my robe. Really? We'll be like brothers. You take my sword, too. And my bow. And my belt. Wow, I... Thank you. As David made the palace his new home, the two young men became best friends. King Saul often sent David out with the army. And David was so successful in battle, Saul gave him a high rank. D-A-B-I-D, yes, he's a one for me, go David! Oh, yeah. Look at him go. Woo! The people loved David so much that King Saul became jealous. Instead of celebrating David's success, he flew into a violent rage and several times tried to kill David. Jonathan, too, could easily have become envious of David. After all, Jonathan was supposed to be the next king. But instead, Jonathan stayed faithful to their friendship and protected David. My father is looking for a chance to kill you. Find a place to hide and stay there. I'll speak to him. I'll wait for you to tell me what to do. Jonathan pleaded with King Saul. Don't do anything to harm David. He's helped you. Why would you kill him without reason? Oh, all right. I won't put him to death. Several times, Saul promised to spare David. But every time, the king broke his promise and plotted to go after David again. What have I done? Why is he trying to kill me? I don't know. I'll do anything to help you. Together, the friends made a plan for David to hide during an important festival to determine how angry Saul was and whether David could come back to the palace. Whatever happens, always be kind to me, as long as I live. And never stop being kind to my family, even when the Lord has destroyed all your enemies. Promise? I promise. David went and hid, while Jonathan returned to the palace and the king's feast. Where is David? Why hasn't he been here? He asked to go see his family. No, oh, I know you're on David's side. You should be ashamed. You'll never be king as long as he lives. He must die. Jonathan's heart sank. He knew that David would never be safe again as long as King Saul was alive. The next morning, Jonathan took his bow out to the field to shoot, part of the arranged plan. A servant came with him. The arrow went far beyond you, didn't it? Hurry up! Run fast! Don't stop! David knew this meant that King Saul was still very angry. After the servant left, David slipped out from behind the stone where he was hiding. Jonathan? David! The friends hugged and wept, knowing they might never see each other again. Go in peace. In the name of the Lord, we've promised to be friends. The Lord is a witness between you and me, and between my family and your family forever. Goodbye, friend. Goodbye. David left to find a new hiding place, and Jonathan returned to the palace. King Saul never stopped chasing David, but Jonathan stayed faithful to his friend. David was deeply saddened when he learned that both Jonathan and King Saul had been killed in battle. Years later, when David became king, he remembered his promise to Jonathan. Is anyone left from the royal house of Saul? If there is, I want to be kind to him because of Jonathan. A son of Jonathan is still living. Both of his feet were hurt so that he can't walk. David had Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, now a young man, brought to the palace. I'm ready to serve you. Don't be afraid. You can be sure that I will be kind to you because of your father, Jonathan. I'll give back to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. And I'll always provide what you need. Thank you, thank you. David faithfully cared for Mephibosheth and his family for the rest of their lives, just as he had promised his friend, Jonathan. David and Jonathan were faithful friends. They could count on each other in good times and bad. David was even a faithful friend after Jonathan died. David kept his promise and took care of Jonathan's son. You can show faithfulness too, by being the kind of person others can count on. That means keeping your promises, doing what you'll say you'll do. 
it means not talking bad about people behind their backs. And there are other ways to be faithful. If someone's scared of trying something new, you can help encourage them. If something unexpected happens to someone, you can have their back. There are a lot of things you can do to be faithful. Small things. It's not like you have to save someone's life, but you could. Faithfulness can spread like a wave. So if you want friends you can count on, you should be someone you can count on. Here's the one thing to remember today. Be faithful so others can count on you. And don't forget, God is always faithful. When you need help, ask God. God gives you the Holy Spirit when you put your trust in Jesus. Jesus truly is a life preserver. Oh, see you next time. What a fab session we've had today. We hope you've enjoyed it. We can't wait to see you again next week either on site from 10.30 a.m. at the Free Church Hall in Letchworth or online from 9.30 a.m. But until then, remember, you were... Born to shine! Bye!